we'll do our best to summarize the ongoing story of the solar winds compromise and what it means for you. Good afternoon, Matt. Uh, you have a really interesting story right now, which is an everybody, every security researcher's mind about a supply chain attack going on. Yeah. Would you like to provide some inputs on it? Sure. So first off, I've got to say we're filming this on Tuesday afternoon, and I fully expect that more information will be out by the time that this goes to air. So I'm going to give it my best shot because there is a lot to unpack. So mm -hmm. the, the base story here is a supply chain attack um, that's affecting huge number of companies worldwide. Um, so we'll start at the beginning. Uh, December 8th, we had a report from FireEye saying that they were breached and their red team tools were stolen. Um, this is the sort of tooling that somebody running uh, a test offense, a uh, pen test, something like that against a customer would use. These tools were basically stolen. So FireEye decided to burn those tools and give out indicators on how to, to catch them in their environment. So by itself, that's mm -hmm. a pretty big story. I mean, FireEye is known as a security company. Um, to be breached as a security company is, is a little bit, bit embarrassing and uh, very concerning. So that by itself was huge news. Uh, December 12th, we found out that Treasury and U.S. Departments of Treasury and Commerce announced they were victims of apparently the same attackers. That's huge. Mm -hmm. These are two major branches of government. Um, and uh, we thought that was, you know, the big news of the week until December 13th. When we found out that companies SolarWinds uh, revealed that they mm -hmm. had been compromised. So attackers got into SolarWinds, and there's some speculation as to how that's been done, but SolarWinds hasn't been forthcoming, so I'm not going to speculate. As it turns out, these bad guys managed to get into the uh, update chain for SolarWinds Orion. This is a network monitoring tool. SolarWinds is known for the okay. network monitoring software that they produce. Um, and FireEye had analysis on this, which was very helpful. They've been doing a very good job of tracking uh, information about what happened and when and providing indicators of compromise. So SolarWinds says that less than 18,000 of their customers who had this were affected. Fine. FireEye is tracking this attacker set as UNC 2452. Uh, there is some uh, rumbling in the news that this is a Russian group, although FireEye has mm -hmm. not stated this. I want to make that clear because um, it really depends. <laughs> I want to be as clear as I can as to what has been proven and what has been speculated here, because okay. um, there's a lot of, of news going around and a lot of it is speculation. So for now, FireEye is tracking this as an actor set that appears to be new. Okay. Um, the main thing to know is that the SolarWinds Orion software was compromised and updates between uh, May, March to May, for this software that was available on the SolarWinds Orion site uh, had a backdoor in it. This was a, a backdoor DLL, solarwinds.orion.core.businesslayer.dll, and it was signed with SolarWinds certificate. That is to say, it looks as if it came from SolarWinds. How it got signed that way, again, can only speculate, but if the bad guys got into SolarWinds, they must have found mm -hmm. the certificates they used to sign their code and sign this malicious DLL with it, and then it got pushed out as part of the update process. Now, SolarWinds doesn't have automatic updating, so admins would have had to go to the website, download the latest version that had that backdoor built into it, and install it. So this is what we're calling Sunburst, or at least that's the fire I named for. This is the backdoor that came in the SolarWinds update. Um, so this malware is pretty sophisticated in the things that it does to evade detection. And I'm going to rattle off a lot of stuff here, but I think it's it's worth noting um, because the level of sophistication indicates a possible nation state attack or at least someone with a lot of resources. So the malware stays dormant for about two weeks after installation. Um, it does a couple things to check that it's not running in some sort of envir environment for analysis. Uh, some of these are very interesting. It won't run unless the machine is domain joined. Um, it won't run unless SolarWinds is installed and it was installed 12 to 14 days ago. So if you're trying to an analyze this in sort of a vacuum without all the prerequisites of what you'd expect in a SolarWinds environment, this thing's not going to run. Uh, it also mm -hmm. checks the IP addresses when it first reaches out to uh, its domain generation algorithm domain. So it's got a specific domain 
it calls out to like a randomized subdomain of that, checks the IP of that. Uh, if it comes back as uh, one of several ranges that suggests it's in a sandbox for analysis, it says, I'm not running, and removes itself and sets a flag so that if he tries to run again, it knows it's on a box that somebody's watching. So they've, they've done a lot here to make this pretty resistant to analysis. Um, so what happens next is they call it to the DGA domain and the C name result comes back with the real C2. That's a little bit different than the way that DNS usually is expected to work, mm -hmm. or at least the way that we would typically expect it to work from, like usually people think of A records, you know, DNS request for a domain name comes back with an IP address. This is a C name, which is like an alias. So I ask you for a name, you give me a different name, which I then have to also look up. So a little bit different and a little harder to analyze from like a passive DNS standpoint. Yeah. So if you're recording DNS resolution on your network, you're probably not looking at C name. Some people are, but most people are looking at the res resolution from uh, a record to IP address. Mm -hmm. So that might have made it a little bit harder to find in your logs as well. So the malware calls home pretending to be uh, a protocol called Orion Improvement Protocol, which is something that SolarWinds uh, uses to actually call home. And they they seem to have done a the bad guys have seemed to have done a good job of analyzing that protocol because they're masquerading as it fairly convincingly. Um, so the malware does a couple other things to hide itself, like it it puts its recon results for looking around the network in a legitimate file as part of SolarWinds. Um, yeah, it's pretty crazy. There's a, a dropper that it also pulls down that runs in memory. They're calling Teardrop. Um, mm. So. That was December 13th uh, and December 14th, uh, the day we're, we're filming, um, notifications that DHS, US State Department and National Institutes of Health were all affected by this breach as well. So that's why I'm saying this is an ongoing story. I fully expect us to have more victims listed in the, the news over the, the next few weeks as people do investigations and incident response. So you know, mm. by the time this hits, there could be an even bigger target that we haven't heard of yet, uh, mostly because solar winds is fairly common. I mean, if you've got an IT budget and you want to do network monitoring using SNMP and other protocols that are meant for that, solar winds is a pretty common tool uh, in a lot of companies. That's why I really do expect to hear about more victims over the, the next couple of days. <laughs> it, it's too much to digest and too many things happening at the same time and the more information is coming in, like you said. Mm -hmm. And maybe by the time we, we, we finish filming, we may have one, much more indicators, maybe more, more victims will may be hearing them. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, what do you think? Like um, it waits for 10 to 12, or maybe 14 to 15 days, some, um, some, uh, some quiet period after that, only this basically malicious behavior shows it, right? Why do you think that is being, I think uh, in order to give some sort of uh, false sense, like, uh, this behavior is not not coming from the update of the software. Mm -hmm. But typically, uh, when you see some, okay, okay, yeah, that's so I'm part going of with that one. Okay, it also makes it much harder to run it in a malware sandbox. I mean, we're used mm -hmm. to malware when it runs. Sometimes you'll have a sleep for ten minutes, thirty minutes, an hour, yeah. and there are ways to yeah. you know speed up time in a sandbox and get past that. But twelve to fourteen days is uh, I haven't heard of anything that waits quite as long. In order to do that, yeah. it also, um, like it said, it also checks that SolarWinds was installed at least that long ago, which is interesting. It's yeah. not just, you know, run and wait. It's make sure that it's actually part of a larger ecosystem that's supposed to be there uh, with SolarWinds mm -hmm. Orion before um, doing its thing again to probably yeah. prevent analysis. Yeah, I mean, another point I want to talk to is because you said it's like a kind of monitor network monitoring tool. Basically, it gives access to the whole network, whichever the compromised network. That's a that's, good. Uh, that's yeah. again a cascading effect. Yeah. So if you need to monitor systems, and that involves yeah. uh, having credentials to those systems to pull back statistics about you know um, memory utilization or or who knows what. Uh, yeah, this thing mm -hmm. is going to have a bunch of credentials configured inside of it somewhere. Uh, so if mm -hmm. you're the bad guy and you manage to compromise this system and then just reach into that trove of credentials, uh, that's an excellent first stepping stone into a network. Like you couldn't ask for much more. There's a few other things to mention. Um, and all of this mm -hmm. stuff that I'm telling you about is from the official write-ups from FireEye, um, Microsoft, Talos, and other very reputable companies. Um, there's um, 
indications that they use uh, attacks against SAML, which is sort of a security assertion mechanism within networks. Mm -hmm. uh, I think ADFS uses it. It's sort of a way of, a, of saying a certain thing about a user. So like if I make a request uh, to a site because I want to use it, I've reached out to the, the SAML provider and they've signed something that says, yes, I am Matt and I have access to this, this, and this, and the site should let me in. Um, oh. In at least one case, the attackers in this set uh, compromised uh, a host with SAML and were able to sign their own assertions uh, to say that mm -hmm. they were, you know, John Q admin uh, with these other sets of uh, permissions and then get into other systems that way. So that is something mm -hmm. else to think about. Um, as again, more of this stuff keeps coming out. Um, there's something that I had read from, I want to say, Velexity that they believe that these same attackers have a way past two-factor authentication in, um, in certain two-factor authentication systems. Um, these guys seem to be very sophisticated, be sit seem to be sitting on a lot of very interesting techniques, uh, which is, I mm. think, why uh, an assertion that it's some sort of very well-resourced, possibly nation-state group, is justified. I just don't know about the attribution to Russia yet. I'd like to see more to say conclusively this is Russian, as opposed to just this is a very advanced APT group. Um, so let's talk about response. If you uh, run an IT shop, a large one, you probably have solar winds. Uh, hopefully you guys Ooh. have good asset management. If you are in IT, you know you've got solar winds on the network. There are things you can look for in your logs to indicate whether or not it's, it's actually running on your network, uh, certain domains that it reaches mm -hmm. out to, things like that. So figure out where you've got it installed. Um, according to SolarWinds, versions 2019.4 HF5 and 2020.2 without a hotfix or 2020.2 hotfix one are affected. However, DHS has a different set that they believe are uh, included in this, including 2020.2.1. So right now, uh, if it was my decision, and again, you should guys do your own research on this, uh, we kind of recommend waiting till version 2020.2.1 hotfix 2, which as far as I know is supposed to be released today sometime, that's the 15th, so by the time you're watching it, hopefully uh, the version 2, the, the hotfix 2 should be out, so it should be a moot point as to whether or not you're going to use 1 or 2, just go with 2. Um, yeah. CISA put out a, an emergency document saying the things that they recommend you do in your network, and they are basically treat any installation of SolarWinds or Orion uh, as mm -hmm. uh, a breach and shut it down and run incident response and everything. Okay. I don't know that they're wrong. I mean, at this point, uh, it's it's a good question. How far you want to go to, to respond to this? Their version is the definitive um, nuke it from orbit version, I want to say. Um, it's definitely worth taking a look at and seeing how many of the things that are in there you can do. And some of them involve making changes to the way that your domain is set up, uh, the strength of certain uh, mechanisms wow. and acts after directory. It's, it's worth a read, absolutely. I did want Those to mention- strong recommendations. Those are very, very strong, strong recommendations. recommendations. Oh, they are, yes. Another thing to mention was a good quote that I read, um, apparently Dmitry Oparovich had posted, here is the good news. No adversary has enough human resources to effectively exploit every potential victim. They pretty much have to focus on those they care most about. Um, mm. Meaning, when SolarWinds says that fewer than 18,000 of their customers were affected by this, you kind of have to do your own risk analysis of where in the 18,000 you rank and whether you think that they are, you are worth somebody's time. Uh, because mm -hmm. even compromising a handful of those, tens or hundreds, uh, takes time, takes uh, effort, resources, uh, and attackers are resource limited just like everybody else. Um, yeah. So it's important to note that yeah. not everybody who downloaded the, the backdoored patch mm -hmm. is going to be a target further on down the line, or that they ever were yeah. a target. Just the malware exists on their network, but possibly it was never used. And I may be saying this, you know, out of turn, um, maybe by tomorrow we'll find out there was some sort of mass automated compromise as a result of this. I don't know. Um, but I feel like that's a safe um, assertion to make is that just because you've got the malware doesn't mean that you were the victim of a nation state attack um, beyond mm -hmm. the installation of the malware, if that makes sense. 
Yeah, and that does. But I, I think uh, presence of malware itself is, uh, you know, something that's caused concern for most of the organization. Yes, I mean, and regardless, I think uh, some sort of uh, remediation should take place, Matt. That's uh, that's my uh, honest opinion. I agree. I mean, at least, like you said, yeah, like I, you said, I uh, maybe get the, yeah, yeah, like you said, uh, I think start with uh, the patches coming in today. Maybe already came in. Uh, may, um, maybe you think um, uh, organizations should monitor for these DGA or DGA domains as well as CNAME resolutions. What What do you think? What What are thoughts on that? Yes, if you have the capability to search through your logs for DNS mm -hmm. resolution uh, attempts out through maybe a web proxy, if you've got one of those in your network, uh, firewall mm -hmm. attempts to some of these sites. The firewall is a, a trickier one because some of these C2 is host was hosted on like shared or cloud infrastructure, which means you may have okay. false positives. I think DNS, mm -hmm. if you have logs going back as far as you can, that would be the first place I would start looking because DNS is a big part of the the initial steps mm -hmm. in this. Those resolutions have to uh, have happened in order for this thing to reach out. One thing I wanted to mention is that Microsoft, it appears, has taken over the the domain that's sort of at the start of the C2 chain, uh, avsvmcloud.com, and pointed it to one of their IP addresses. Now I said before that the the anti-analysis features of this malware include a check against a list of IP ranges, and if you know if that domain resolves to one of those IP addresses, it's assumed that they're being analyzed or they're, uh, there's something about this environment that's off and the malware shuts okay. itself off. That mm -hmm. domain is now permanently pointed to one of those IPs in those ranges, which I think is a brilliant move. Um, so basically, if someone were to run it right now uh, and it were allowed to talk out to uh, DNS servers, uh, the malware would probably see that and shut down. So anytime that, uh, that check is being done, it's going to forever, hopefully, um, cause the malware to shut itself off. So that's a good move. So, yeah, hopefully, I think uh, since Microsoft is doing it, so hopefully in near future, they, obviously they will have visibility into who are doing the checks and uh, maybe they provide the list to the customers, maybe broader organizations that will be helpful. What do you think? Yes, yeah, that should work. They should have records of it as long as they're um, able to log those, those um, requests. You, mm -hmm. may, you might not get the exact hosts that are compromised, but at least you'll get the originating networks, and hopefully it's... Yes. Yeah, yeah there should be at least some yes. value in that, in that uh, set mm -hmm. of logs if they're able to provide it. I mean, there are ways, I think as, you, as we go here, we will have lots of things and maybe how to detect them more accurately. Um, let's wait and see how this pans out. Hopefully, we will come out of this uh, very soon. I hope so. Uh, I will mention that, again, good resources for further details on this. Uh, there are blog posts and GitHub posts from FireEye, blog posts from Microsoft, mm -hmm. uh, and Cisco Talos. Honestly, I think I, sh I should not be your last stop on this train if you want more information. Um, there's plenty of it to be had. Um, get it from the sources uh, that are trustworthy mm -hmm. and reliable, um, and keep an eye on it because this is definitely an evolving story. Yeah, it's just, uh, definitely. Thanks for those information, Matt. Uh, especially the other links. Uh, some of them I'm not aware. Like Talos is also jumped into the analysis. Uh, thanks for that tips. And definitely, I'm surely going to watch those blogs and uh, spaces. You know, for further updates.